Well, after their morale-boosting win at Ibrox last Saturday, Lou Macari's reign at Parkhead suffered its first major disappointment with Wednesday's defeat in Lisbon. Today, the new manager took charge on home ground for the first time, but his team talk was delivered to the accompaniment of anti-board chants, both inside and outside the ground, before the kick-off of the match against Partick Thistle. Director Michael Kelly was given a particularly hostile reception by the estimated 800 fans. Arriving directors and players had to run the gauntlet. Uh, uh, Captain Paul McStay, though, was greeted more warmly. The majority of the demonstrators in their places in time for kick-off. So, too, was commentator Jock Brown. Celtic manager Lou Macari has team problems for his first match in charge at Parkhead. Gary Gillespie and John Collins are out through injury, along with long-term victims Mark McNally and Mike Galloway. So his squad is stretched to the full. In come Brian O'Neill and Darius Dubcek with Rudy Vata and 19-year-old Brian McLaughlin on the bench. And Pat McGinley's recent spell of good form following his £525,000 transfer from Hibs in the summer coincides with his move from a wide right position to central midfield beside Paul McStay. And he's likely to continue in that role this afternoon. Partick Thistle have managed remarkable consistency of selection in their seven-match unbeaten run. But Alec Taylor is unfit for today's match, so George Shaw comes back for the only change in the side which drew nil-nil with Hibbs in midweek. And John Lambie will be depending again on the scoring exploits of self-confessed Celtic supporter Albert Craig, who has scored no fewer than nine goals from midfield at the age of 31 after a modest career which has taken him from Dumbarton to places like Hamilton, Newcastle and Dundee. The referee this afternoon is Eric Martindale from Newlands in Glasgow. Well, after demonstrations outside the stadium before the match, it's down to the real thing. And Celtic in good heart under their new manager, Lou Macari, looking to justify a lot of points this afternoon in terms of players' form and attitude. There's Jerry Craney with the cross. Headed away by Greg Watson. And that's Roddy Grant with the layoff. So Byrne pointing where he wants Shaw to run. Tom Boyd is alive to that. Checking through the Celtic ranks. It's confirmed now that Darius Dubček is the direct replacement for Gary Gillespie, who's out through injury. There's Jerry Britton trying to get behind Tony Mowbray. That was effective in the end. Free kick against Mowbray. But his attention's on Britton. It's a free kick to Thistle. Celtic pull everyone back except Charlie Nicholas to defend inside the box. There's Ian Cameron. away there by Craney, turned by Byrne, and the Celtic defence pushing out, bringing the Thistle player with them. There's Paul Byrne now. Now for becoming a favourite among the Celtic supporters, Byrne. Played forward by Grant. Byrne again. Grant can come forward this time. Nicholas with a turn pass, good running by Grant. Was he bowled over there inside the area? No, says the referee. Well, Peter Grant clearly believes he was fouled in that run. And I think this may show that he has a case. Good one, too, here. Played with Charlie Nicholas. Grant very determined, indeed, racing for the ball. Albert Craig was with him. Well, referee Martin Dale looked towards his linesman for some help there, but decided there was no infringement. Flick on from McStay. This is Willie Jimison. And the late tackle there by McStay on Cameron. It's a free kick to Thistle. Here's Cameron again. This time, the foul committed by Peter Grant, who is still, I think, a little irate about not getting that penalty award. So a set piece for Thistle to exploit with Albert Craig in a shooting position. Played in towards Grant, that's Cameron, that's great play by Thistle. 
Well, a superb move straight from the training ground and almost totally effective. There was Cameron peeling off. The ball played into Grant, who knew exactly where Cameron would be. And that's a good effort. Now Boyd attacking McKee. Getting some help there. The official pullback from George Shaw. Another very really accurate pass finds Burn. Good running by McGinley. That's for Nicholas. Splendid, flowing play there from Celtic. It had vision, it had stealth, it had sharpness around the box. And the finish there from Nicholas wasn't far away. Left leg on from Britain. Grant couldn't control it. By good Mowbray. Greg watched the full stretch, did well. It's Nicholas, Craney, and now Bun. And another fine attempt on goal. This time by Paul McStay, who was forcing himself through from midfield into the penalty area. At the end of a cross like this, it was a very good attempt. Didn't quite catch it properly. Food for thought there. Frank Connor advising Lou McCarry. Now looking at a run from Britain. Now the square pass to Milne was on. That's what he's being told now, Cameron. But he does play with such invention. Burns head There's no outside a chance here for Jerry Britton. Well, the lob was the correct finish but he couldn't judge it properly and the referee is waving Tom Boyd away from the near side linesman well the ball came off the head of David Byrne and the appeals were made for offside instantly as Britain came through here ball bounced in front of him he knew that Bonner was approaching tried the lob too much on the ball and now there's trouble here Referee Eric Martindale taking action against Tom Boyd for protesting too vehemently. Well, a foolish one that for Boyd because the yellow card could cost him a suspension later in the season. And there was no goal scored, and there was really little reason to become so upset. Nicholas and our burn. Good play by Bun. Needs some help now. Gets it from Grant. <laughs> Another play by Craig. Falls straight at McStay's feet. Grant again. Now Bun. Comes inside Cameron. Then inside Craig. A positive play there from Paul Bun. He is very confident in possession. Always willing to take on defenders. Well held by Nelson. O'Neill. Boyd has made the run. Gets there to earn the corner. George Shaw did well, backtracking with Boyd. Another former Sunburn player. He realized the danger as Boyd broke on the outside. So corner kick again to Celtic. Back into the danger area, there's the chance on! And Celtic go in front, Hunt McGinley for the finish. Ball was so dangerous inside the penalty area. But that goes all the way across there, and it's a very good header back into the danger area, initially by Trainey. And Pat McGinley forced the ball home with his head. We've had 34 minutes of the match, header in it again. Helped across the penalty box by Charlie Nicholas. And a good finish by McGinley. For goal number four for Celtic, for Pat McGinley. Oh, okay, looking a little more relaxed now, I think, with the way the game is running. It's burn. And fine footwork again. The Irishman. Look at the way he sidesteps Greg Watson here. Takes this to the outside of the right boot. Well, I wonder if he had more success with the left there. Well, 
Paddy Grant's layoff finds Britain. Chance on here now for Thistle. That's Britain. Well, Roddy Grant was asking for a pass into the penalty box, but Britain had an eye for goal here. Hasn't had too many chances to test. Pat Bonner in the first half. Wasn't going to pass this one up. Just did the ball to his right foot then, rather sliced it wide. Well, the referee has checked his linesman. This may well be the end of the first half action. Indeed it is. So applause around the stadium as Celtic depart. They've dominated the match for the bulk of the first half, but with just one goal to show for it. Scored by Pat McGinley in the 35th minute after a spot of head tennis in the box. The corner kick from Paul Byrne, headed in by Craney, helped on in the air by Nicholas, and then forced home from the forehead of Pat McGinley. A lead which Celtic merit. It's Celtic 1, Partick this on nil. Things going Celtic's way so far in the match. Thistle will have to try to change that early in the second period. There was an indication they may have been happy to leave here with a point in the way they played in the opening half hour or so, but that goal from Pat McGinley has sort of changed the approach Thistle will have to take in the second half. That could make for even more entertainment. It's Paul McStay who is showing lots of urgency in midfield. Paul Byrne provides the width again on the right for Celtic. Running inside Milne. McGinley. Trying to pick out Nicholas with a pass. Jimmis is doing well again. Strong tackle by Peter Grant. This is Byrne again, being shown inside by Milne. Now McGinley. George Shaw back, marking O'Neill. Boyd leaves that to O'Neill. This is McGinley. Trainee well tackled there by McKee. This is Roddy Grant. A little bit of misjudgment there by the two players, Shaw and Boyd. The result is a throw to Thistle. First match between the sides this season. Ended in a 1 0 victory for Celtic. score on that occasion, Mark McNally, who's injured. Shaw doing his good work going backwards. McKee bundled down there by Craney, a free kick to Thistle. Craney Craney wants to have his say. Anthony Martindale seems to be prepared to listen to that. Jimison's free kick. Even Roddy Grant, he's beaten by Mowbray. Space there for Cameron. It's an elegant move of a very skillful left foot, Ian Cameron. Cameron in possession again. This is Britain. Grant tees it up for Byrne. Oh, disappointment and frustration there for Byrne. Carefully engineered set up this. Cameron to Britain. He knew exactly what was happening inside. Played that into space, was set up well by Roddy Grant into the part of David Byrne. There's the offside flag, led in by Brian O'Neill and halted by Jimison the first time. to Boyd. Greg Watson's head up. Can't show too much of that to Nicholas. It's retrieved by McStay. Greg Watson's positioning was good again for Thistle. Good pass from McStay. This is Paul Bunn. That's a good ball in early. season with nine minutes of the second half gone a great ball in this by Paul Bunn and the header the glancing header by Nicholas left Nelson totally stranded and the pass to Paul Bunn with a good one in the first place and then that early cross left the thistle defense 
totally at sea. Awkward one for McKee. Smith did well. That's Jemison. Now Cameron. There's Callum Milne. Trying to thread that through a very small gap. Didn't make it. Was done. Looking for Craney. He's helping in the middle. It's arriving late. It's there now, though. And it was Byrne who tried to finish that. On the way for a corner kick by Tom Smith. A good play again from Celtic. Craney at the byline, pulling it across. Paul Byrne had a chance under pressure there. Ran away from Nicholas. Now Byrne has made both Celtic goals so far. And that was the nearest he's come to scoring himself. Back in the role of goal maker. Retrieved here by O'Neill. Grant back defending, lashed away by Mill. Stop check. And well won by O'Neill. And the header by Craney with an attempt at a looping header over Craig Nelson, I'm sure. And he does have this ability to be able to see what's going on around him as he goes for a header. And I think he tried to loft that over the keeper. O'Neill, corner kick's been given, challenged by Tom Smith, no pressure on the Thistle defence, well it doesn't really look as though there's any way back for Thistle at the moment, but I thought it would certainly kill the match in a contest, well it was struck very well indeed by McStay, out with Bunn again, Craig Nelson in the near post. Back with Boyd. Or top check rather. Well held by Nelson. Very well held indeed. Two Celtic players closing in on him. There's the effort from Paul Byrne. That's it, Craig Nelson, full stretch. And now Milne, the thistle. He's got a good match replacing Gary Gillespie in the heart of the defence. Well, oh, well, he often won grand. That's a good play this time. Tom Smith breaking. Chance on here for Shaw. It was put off by Bonner. A very good goalkeeping there. Try keeping the ball away. He was left exposed. It hasn't happened often in the match, but Pat Bonner responded extremely well for Celtic. Coming from John Lambie. Tide is running against him at the moment. Helped on by Craney. There goes Nicholas. Good positioning by Nelson. What breaks in for Britain? The chance on here for Thistle. The best chance of the match so far. And it's passed up by Britain. What a difference that might have made. Two defenders going for the ball together, Peter Grant and Tony Mowbray. Neither got to properly. There was lots of time here for Britain to set himself. Pat Bonner trying to cut down the angle. It's off the outside of the post. What a chance for Britain. Good running by McGinley again. That's towards Trainey. Cover was provided well there by Tom Smith coming back for Thistle. O'Neill was a shade casual there. Well, a chance now to put pressure on the Thistle defence, but he's in need of help. He gets him Boyd. That's McStay. Now Grant. He is Byrne. Cross again released early. Helped on by Jimison for a throw. Boyd. Day. Here's O'Neill. Over the way straight to that. Right through to Pat McGinley. Oh, he enjoyed that one all right. Sweetly struck. Well, the ball played in here.
by Brian O'Neill. This is the defence appear to be coping quite well there. Headed out though by Cameron. Straight to McGinley. And he had no question there about the shot. Nelson couldn't get to it. And O'Neill rifling this across. Ian Cameron deep in defence. The header which I'm sure he'll be unhappy about. Taken on the volley by McGinley. Fine goal. And 3-0 to Celtic. Paul McStay. Free kick's been given there against Roddy Grant. A bit of pushing. Celtics still coming forward. Here's Paul Byrne. Controls this instantly, assesses his options, checks inside Milne, and lets fly with the left foot, bringing out that very good save. There he goes again. And Nicholas trying a neat little flick there inside the area. Back with Byrne again. Left off check. Again, he missed that, but the direction was wrong. Guided it wide of the post. Well, hit this very hard indeed, his left foot. Supporting player is McStay. And the ball is now coming regularly from the Celtic supporters. Well, he's led by example in midfield for McStay. He's in a fine match. Still being chanted, the players doing fine at the moment. No complaints clearly about the management now. But the Celtic board still getting some stick in the midst of what is turning out to be a very convincing Celtic performance on the field. Barter wants the ball played inside and which they couldn't get it to him. Good coming there by Martin Clark. Well, that's good running by Byrne. Another fine cross, well taken though by Nelson. Well, Paul Byrne really is one of the best crossers of the ball in the Premier Division at the moment. Pulling that one out, but well taken by Nelson. Yes, McLaughlin. Getting a touch of the ball. His first sample of first team football. He is again an offsided midfield player. Trying to get the bet up there of Kevin McKee down the corner though. Oh, a little player has enjoyed this initiation, I'm sure, to top level football. Gardens corner. Held it away by Jimison. Top check. What did he bring that down to his left foot? Down to attack possibility now for Thistle. A layoff from Shaw finds Britain. Shaw's offside. Well, Celtic have developed this offside trap now, keeping their defence in a line, pushing forward with their flat back four system. So Pat Bonner takes the free kick. It brings the match to an end and signals the largest league win of the season for Celtic, winning by these three clear goals, and there could be no argument about that being thoroughly merited on the play overall. Pat McGinley scored the first and the third and contributed hugely in the Celtic midfield. And the other goal came from Charlie Nicholas in 54 minutes. Thistle really had no answer and it's a thoroughly satisfactory start at Celtic Park for Lou McCarry. It's Celtic 3, Park at Thistle 0. Well, your first match in charge at Celtic Park, were you happy with that performance? Uh, I was pleased with the result, Joe. You know, I, I think the position we're in at the moment, we want results first and foremost. Uh, after it, we'll analyse how we got the result and if we think we're on the right lines. Um, obviously, I was happy we got the result. 
not too happy maybe with one or two things the way we play the game. But uh, I think Frank Connor tells me it's a little bit better than we've been doing in the past. You did play without Gary Gillespie and John Collins, and yet the, the, the pattern of play seemed to be unchanged. Well, Celtic should be able to play without Gary Gillespie and John Collins, but uh, we were a little bit worried about that because of the number of players we've got to pick from. But I'm um, a believer that, uh, especially here at Celtic Park, whoever you put out on the pitch should be good enough to, to win a game against anybody. It was your biggest league win of the season so far, so what aspects didn't please you? Don't frighten the life out of me. <laughs> <laughs> if you're saying that was a tremendous performance and all that, uh, you're worrying me a little bit, Joe. Um, I don't really think we've got the knack of things in terms of defending properly at times and how to defend. They probably play a little bit too much football at the back for me, and I think if you do that, you'll get punished. But I can't change that overnight, and I don't really intend to, but we got away with it today, and I mean, we just escaped a... Uh, an early chance for Thistle, which, I mean, really, with teams I've been with, they would have been four or five yards offside. That was a disputed decision, and I probably don't think it was offside. Uh, and I'm interested.